Comcast. Shockingly, this sequence includes an on-brand race cart, but not a minion saying, BANANA! How do you miss this opportunity? BANANA! No, you keep hitting the box to get all the loot. Don't just stop. 48 seconds of logos. Feels like the giant flying lava rock monster five times the size of a city made of ice is having a pretty easy time destroying the city made of ice. And I'm wondering how much of the victory is due to the nature of fire and ice to disagree and how much is just the sheer size of this fucking thing, which they clearly had ready to attack five years ago, but just kept growing it larger and larger like me building a navy in a game of Civ Five. Fuck Civ Six. This is not how volcanoes work. Why do movies show people doing this like it's okay? Kids, do not crack your own neck. I finally found it. But do you know that it only lasts 30 seconds? We like sports and we don't care who knows. This website is real and it boasts a chat feature, which of course I clicked on. I went with the 20 questions option and discovered that these guys are bragging about having a measly 64 clients. That is barely five clients a month for an entire year. Even more upsetting is their claim to need to hire a dispatcher to help field their nonstop calls. They are liars with terrible business sense. I am so glad we spent our life savings on this commercial. Okay, first of all, spending your life savings on a single commercial. Second of all, just how small was your life savings? Because local commercials aren't really all that expensive. Our mom called and she said, oh boys, that's the best commercial I've ever seen. And I said, thank you very much, mother. We're very proud of it. Charlie Day, not even trying to alter or disguise his voice, naturally ends up sounding exactly like Charlie Day and it's distracting. Spike leaves behind three fourths of a pizza? Who has the kind of money to just leave behind most of your lunch? What a waste. Box it up. I am unreasonably annoyed at Luigi's ability to use a touch screen while wearing gloves. We can be there and we can fix it right away. Okay. And then before getting an address, he hangs up. Because it's a Mario movie, they can't take a car and they have to run and there are suddenly lots of obstacles for them to jump or dive to avoid and God damn it, this staircase is basically a lawsuit waiting to happen. It looks cool, but it's a death trap. Having a secret handshake for celebrating after fixing the most basic of plumbing problems. He literally tightened a pipe fixture. That's all he did. Celebrate more important sh you dweebs. How many fucking towels are needed in this fucking cabinet? Because there are 15 and only one robe and two hooks. So this is towel planning gone fully off the rails. At no point do these grown adults call for the pet owners to get involved in a solution for their dumbass pet. That's right, kids. The first big action sequence of your happy movie about a beloved video game character hinges on a beloved family pet turning into a raging murder machine. <laughs> This is not what plumbers do. This is not how pipes work. Oh, so they hear a tiny whimper on the other side of the glass, but not the brothers screaming upstairs at the top of their lungs. I think you're nuts. And to really get the audience excited for this lighthearted movie, let's watch a parent sh all over their child's dream. Ah, oh, yes. Nothing like it. Why would you put the dartboard three inches to the left of your television? Are you insane? Did you take out a massive insurance policy on that television? Our whole lives, everyone's telling us we can't do this, we can't do that. How old are Mario and Luigi? They're acting like mustached children living at home in a shared room. Yet they are also apparently old enough to have quit their previous jobs to pursue a dream of plumbing. Is the movie demographic aimed at middle-aged adults still living in their parents' basement playing video games to avoid responsibility? You gotta get to that pressure valve! A oh, pressure valve? Oh boy, oh boy, this is so exciting! Neither of these two appear to have any difficulty shimmying across a dirty pipe despite one being weighed down by tools and both have no grip on their beefy gloved hands. That's right, if not for being incredibly stupid and hanging on an old pipe that happens to fall into an old flimsy brick wall, we would have no movie. I knew saving Brooklyn was a bad idea. Kevin Durant said the same thing. This incredibly useful sign designed to keep people away from dangerous areas is located at the very back of a dark dead end where no one would see it until they were far beyond the keep out portion of the program. Listen, if this is how fucking great it looked when Mario pipe warped between worlds and we never got to see it until now, I'm really upset. Nothing can hurt us as long as we're together. And this movie makers is why kids hold hands and jump off roofs onto trampolines and get ping ponged onto a spike fence. Come on, Mario, our big adventure begins now. Waiting 20 goddamn minutes to start the adventure that we came here for. Luigi lands in a nightmare and opts for exploring the area and attempting to survive the wild rather than, oh, I don't know, give one shot at crawling back through the fucking pipe? I know you wanna see where you're going, but that moon is doing a damn good job of lighting this up and you are only drawing attention to yourself with this flashlight, Luigi. Undead hench turtles. It's a good thing that the remnants of the stone bridge act like a buoyant lava resistant floaty pad. I mean, 
shame that other things will immediately disintegrate in the lava, but don't pay attention to that. Go, Luigi! This would be the perfect time to have a ghost coming toward Luigi in the distance until he turns to look at it, but nope. There will be no ghosts until later in the movie when one will attend a f***ing wedding of all things. I guess having them do jumps makes sense, but why do the floating platforms have to be real in this movie? Is it because you hate physics? I'm going to convince the Great Kong Army to help us. But what if you don't? I mean, ultimately she does. Their mad king doesn't make alliances. The Kongs will never agree. I can convince him. I'll leave for the Jungle Kingdom in the morning. This sounds like the worst plan ever. You're very, very... Small. I see not even the creators of Mario movies can avoid reaching for the low-hanging rotten plot fruit that is using appearances as slander. Let's see what you're made of. Don't you want to bring any of these guards with helmets and spear axes with you on your journey to the Jungle Kingdom? This gauntlet looks almost nothing like the one they run. And to prove it, let's keep this still image up on screen to compare things to, shall we? The screen pipe seems to have appeared out of nowhere, as well as these stacked golden blocks. These dramatic spikes in the adjacent row that ends with a power-up box are new. She launches off the muncher, sailing toward a platform with a curved edge and the spinny balls. I guess that means she's avoiding all the other platforms and managing to jump all the way over here? She successfully slides under one without injury because suddenly the spikes are gone. This frog leap over a Tetris shape with spikes and another muncher will lead to a free fall onto a bouncy pad that launches her upward toward floaty pipes. None of that is on our map. And so we have to assume she's off the grid way up here somewhere to prepare for her second free fall. Okay, after an entire sequence off the map that included kicking Bowser in the face, we are on the folly blocks headed toward the flag, meaning she has to be right here. She's running. Here we go. Oh my fucking God, these bullets are ahead of her what the f is going on that was amazing it was not how, how am i supposed to do that with the power-ups they give us special abilities right but peach's run didn't start off with a power-up so <laughs> mario does not immediately check the size of his package in this scene i can't play the music but why didn't the band stop playing after bowser started addressing the troops that's disrespectful of course she hates me but that makes me love her all the more. Don't get more attached to the person that wants nothing to do with you. Redirect that obsession to the only relationship that matters when all else fails, which is with your imagination and your dominant hand. And listen, if flicking your bits is somehow more uncomfortable than addressing the undertone of if she says no, just try harder, we're telling stories very wrong. Well, what if she says no? Then I will power up with this star and destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! Well, they are doubling down on the if she says no, try a different way until she says yes thing. Holy sh! Why does Bowser's blast turn an ungloved Koopa into a gloved dry bone? This movie makes Luigi into the damsel in distress and makes the princess into Morpheus and Mario into Luigi. Well, that settles it. You're coming with us. What the f***? Mario had to spend hours and hours and maybe days learning how to not even complete that obstacle course, but this little dude has attitude and that's all it takes? The princess has questionable and unfair standards. So she really didn't bring any of the armed guards with her? I was kind of joking earlier. I'll never let anyone ruin this. I mean, you will if you keep wasting time and climbing up massive rock spires, only to have to climb back down them in order to continue on your journey. It is my understanding that everyone loves the Peach song that Bowser sings, and that is just their latent love of Jack Black overpowering their musical tastes. Thinking about your brother? We've never been apart this long. A day or two? That seems unhealthy. You don't seem like you're from here. I don't know where I'm from. You don't? You instantly recognize this human as a human. And he looks more like you than you do any of the Mushroom Kingdom folk. How do you not wonder if you might be human? My earliest memory is arriving. She has a pacifier in. She's two years old. Are you telling me she remembers this? They made me their princess. What? They took you in as a baby, raised you alongside their own, and then somehow, at some point, decided you were superior to all their own raised children? They named an alien their president? And everyone was happy about it? There's a huge universe out there with a lot of galaxies. Thanks, Neil deGrasse Princess, but isn't this mission urgent? There's something odd about the fire pointy island dwelling villain using airships to ferry his minions around, but I can't quite put my Hindenburg on it. Not sure if you know who I am, but I'm about to marry a princess and rule the world. Overconfidence. Okay, but how do you feed prisoners in a place like this? Or is that the point, that they are only here for as long as it takes for them to starve? He is cute, but he is. Says the tiny penguin that threw snowballs at lava to defend his people. Great and mighty Cranky Kong. Look, I'm often cranky, but it never gets better because someone points out my crankiness to me. Oh, he makes me laugh. <laughs> you want my army so badly? Defeat my son? 
And the Kong Lord just went from straight refusal to, well, this little guy is humorous, so I'll let you have my army if he beats my son for no reason. It's nothing for the Kongs to gain here. Also, his son will be Donkey, and this is just a parade of scenes of video games containing Mario, and it should honestly be f***ing ashamed at how much money it made because it's some lazy-ass f***ing tripe. That's what they came here for! Man, Seth Rogen sounds even more like himself than Charlie Day does. Did they even know what movie they were doing audio for? Is that why the voice work is so generic? Mario survives everything that happens to him in the DK gauntlet, and we are never told how or why his human body can withstand this much of a beating. Meow. Sigh. So, due to the cat suit, Mario somehow kicks Donkey's ass. And I liked it better when Donkey just threw barrels from up above and Mario had to jump or dodge the barrels. If we're gonna do movie scenes ripped from video games, why didn't we do the barrels? Still haven't heard a single good reason why this gladiator stadium needs to be 500 feet up in the air like it's some kind of Harry Potter sh**. You kept feeding you hey. senseless and you just kept getting back up? Mistaking stubbornness for strength. Some of the Rocky movies do this as well. Lucky for you guys, I got a shortcut. How Peach didn't know about this shortcut on her own island is ridiculous. The entire previous travel sequence was entirely pointless because there was a warp pipe all along. I mean, it felt pointless before the warp pipe reveal, but now it for sure was. We're gonna need cops. Oh, f me, we're doing another video game. As ACDC's Thunderstruck plays and they get their custom carts made, I feel it's important to point out that absolutely none of this is meaningful to me or even interesting, let alone exciting. So if you enjoy this, just take me off your Christmas card list because we are not compatible people. The Fast and the Marius. Thankfully for Mario and the other racers, the Bifrost is actually part of this race course. No one noticed the highly obvious Bowser Castle peeking out of the cloud. Mario gets blown up and magically lands on another vehicle in the race so he can continue in the competition. That is how you princess! By not looking where you were driving? Because she's not looking where she's driving. Blue shell! I don't know if the blue shell is intentionally going for the person that was clearly in second place, but it's dumb and wrong and has cost too many people too many games. This sin is for you, stupid shell that can't tell who's in first and who isn't, pulling an ally to safety while also further choking him to death. They race home to tell everyone to evacuate the city, but why don't they have radios? They have race cars and hover pads, but no radios? No, princess. I stole this star for us. Doing stupid and possibly illegal sh** because you think you're in love with someone that you're actually not remotely compatible with because you just have a lusty crush from a distance and don't even know that person in the slightest. Yes, this sin is for college me. I'll, I'll marry you, just don't hurt my toads. I'll marry you, just don't hurt my toads. You have my word. Taking this f***er at his word. Will you will all be ritualistically sacrificed. Finally, mercy. I see someone saw James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie, specifically Polka Dot Man. How the f*** did they throw this sh** together so quickly? I see all your game characters attending this wedding, and I have to tell you that the Muppets already did this in The Muppets Take Manhattan, which is also a superior movie to this by literally any and every measure. Princess! I got it! But forget being shown how Toad went about acquiring an ice flower while being held prisoner in a floating castle surrounded by enemies and lava. I can't play the music for you, but why does this alternate dimension land with sentient mushrooms and turtles and sh** use the Earth-specific wedding march music? LOWER THE PRISONERS! Isn't that just a waste of a cage? I mean, just open the bottoms of the cages and drop them all out at once. It's faster, allowing them to get to the wedding, and it won't require entirely remaking all the cages. She just turned into Elsa from Frozen to fight Bowser's fire, and that is copyright infringement! I think this might be the most average movie ever made. I guess kids today would call it mid. Voice work, average. Story, average. Animation, pretty good actually, but wasted. Action, average. Its biggest defense is not being daring enough to have a biggest defense. Thankfully, it only made a billion dollars. Wait, what? Is that shit for real? I told you, see? As long as we're together, everything is gonna be okay. You have been apart the entire film and are only now together due to some of the most convenient mathematics of all time. Things aren't going to be okay because you're together. You're going to be okay because you're the f***ing hero and there hasn't been a single surprising beat to the story so far. Who knew that kicking a sentient bullet in the eye would cause it to abandon its mission slash orders and chase after the eye kicker? Not I! Just how is a raccoon bear suit that has a helicopterable tail faster than a rocket bullet? Ow! I guess the damage Mario takes tumbling through several mushrooms isn't the right kind of damage to remove his raccoon Mario suit. And for reasons, only our main characters are sucked back into Mario's neighborhood. Thousands of toads are hiding nearby and they manage to avoid the vortex. And how much better would this entire next sequence have been with toads running amok? This is like the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. It's dark yet colorful, it's happening in the air, and I have no idea what's going on. I thought Bowser fired a bullet that fired Mario through the pipe. How the f*** does that result in Bowser himself being able to cross into this dimension? You 
ruined my wedding! So Bowser has now forgotten about the Power Star he just stopped Mario from getting, and that will definitely be important later when they are fighting, and maybe Mario or Luigi stumbles on it and gets invincible and wins the day. That will be fulfilling for stupid people and children. Stupid children. This being Punch-Out Pizzeria tells you everything about this movie in a single freeze frame. It's all references and no heart. <sighs> Mamma mia! Holy f this commercial is so perfectly timed it's enraging. I've added 20 sins for this perfectly timed nostalgia bomb that motivates Mario to go do whatever the f he's gonna go do, and I am livid right now. You are cheating! Nothing can hurt us as long as we're together. You guys continue to misunderstand, misuse, and mistake this phrase for some kind of applicable wisdom when, in fact, you went down the tube into this universe together right before getting separated. I hate you. Because they touched it at the same time, they both get the powers of the wait. That isn't fair at all. This movie about a video game about New York City plumbers sucked into an alternate dimension populated by mushrooms and turtles isn't following the rules. This fight against the all-powerful Bowser is going so well, I have expect Star-Lord to show up and ruin it all. Mario! You were amazing! But f complimenting Luigi. Also, why are the parents acting like any of this is normal? Sure, be excited about your kids saving this block, but why is no one confused about a giant gorilla speaking English? Let's hear it for the Super Mario Brothers! God damn it. Roll credits, I guess. They are still sharing a bedroom. You can't save me like this! They gave him a fully functional miniature piano? Bowser were to throw that piano upwards and be injured as it fell on top of him. Wouldn't that revert the mushroom's effects and give him back his size? Movie thinks it needs a second post credit scene to entice us to watch a second movie with a beloved character when we know Mario will only sacrifice them to make a jump. about this recipe. <laughs> we fix him. <laughs> Squirrel! Your brother has landed in the Darklands. They're under Bowser's control. Why are you whispering? They can't hear you. I'm going on an adventure! The heavy transport ships will leave as soon as they're loaded. Only two fighter escorts per ship. I'm so cold. Listen, Rose, you're gonna get out of here. That missile is targeted to the giant's current position! Where's the giant, Mansley? 